This is Fun Fun Function, a Monday morning show where we try to become more excited and confident about programming by exploring old wisdom, wild ideas and having fun. A lot of people have requested another functional programming video and uh, I figured that I'd try my hand at one this week and I would like to talk about functors. Functors is actually something that you are probably already using in your everyday programming. Map and filter are functors, for instance. Today we are going to explore what it is that makes uh, map and filter part of the functor family, and we're also going to write a little functor of our own. But before we do that, we're gonna do some programming without functors, to get a sense of the problem that functors are here to solve. Behold, enterprise grade function plus one. This is a bit of a stupid function, but I am using a super simple example here to not distract us from the concept uh, that we're going to explore. Imagine that in the real world, plus one is doing something much more complicated. The function plus one just adds one to whatever value you pass to it. So here we pass it a three and we get a four. However, if we pass in an array of numbers, say uh, three and four, like this, things will, of course, break. <laughs> but we would like it to work. If we pass in array three, four, we would like it to return array four, five. So we write something like this. There's no magic here, just a lot of code. If value is an array, we iterate over the array and create a new array, adding one to every number. Pause if you want to have a look, but it's not that important. Uh, and this works. Now we get a uh, 4, 5 if we input 3, 4. Next up, let's say that we discover that we need plus 1 to work on strings in addition to arrays and single numbers. Like this, if we pass it the string ABC, it should output BCD. So we add another bunch of code to handle the string case. You can pause the video if you're interested in what the code does, but it's really just incrementing the chars. It's not too interesting. The important thing to note here is that it's now pretty annoying that the function does a whole lot more than just plusing. But it works. It's big, but it works. But let's say that we also need to write a minus one function. Then we would have to duplicate this whole shebang between the two functions. Or I guess that plus and minus could be generalized into an, I don't know, arithmetic function. But when we add square, division, floor, and every other math function under the sky, we would end up with a huge generic math function. Instead, it feels like there is a way to generalize this upper part here. The thing that does the iteration of the string and the array, respectively. It doesn't really feel like it belongs in the plus function anyway, right? And this is where functors come in. For the first part, the array, JavaScript actually has a uh, built-in functor that you are probably already familiar with. Map. Bonk. This is all there is to plusing arrays. Are you getting a sense of how functors are making things easier? Map should be familiar to you, by the way. If it is not, go check out my video on map here. If you don't know map, the rest of this video will not make sense. As I mentioned before, if you've been programming JavaScript for a while, you've probably been using functors without knowing that they are part of this family called functors. In a minute, we're going to talk about what it is that makes functor qualify as a part of the functor family. But first I want to show you another example of a functor. This time we are going to write it ourselves. By using array map we've sorted out the uh, array plusing case. But what about the other case, plusing uh, strings going from ABC to BCD? We will solve this by making a string functor, like this. This time I really want you to pause the video and take this code in for a little bit before continuing. What you see in the string functor is almost the same logic from the big version of the plus one function that we saw before. Nothing strange going on here, really. We pass in a string, abc, into the string functor and we're getting bcd out. String functor takes a value and a function. 
Fn. As you see, value in this case is abc, and Fn refers to the plus one function. String functor goes on to split the string into an array called chars. It then maps over the array of chars. The char parameter that is being passed to the map callback is each character in the form of a string with the length of one. So it's just, you know, a string that is b. We convert that character to a number and we pass that into fn. And again, fn is going to be plus one in this execution. We then take the return value of fn, which is a number, and convert that number to a character. Map will return an array of these incremented characters, and we then join them together using join. And because string functor now does this unpacking process for us, we can now let plus one and minus one do their thing. Plus one and minus one no longer need all that iteration logic inside of them, because that work is handled by the functors. So string functor and map are both functors. Functors are functions that take a value and a function. The value might be uh, an array in the case of map or a string in the case of the string functor. The functor is responsible for unwrapping the individual values of the uh, value being passed in and then passes each of those into the function. And then it takes the processed values and creates a new structure for those values that it returns. Another example of a functor would be array.filter, for instance. Array.foreach is similar, but it's not a functor. It does take a value and it does take a function and it does unwrap the value into its component and passes it to the function, but it doesn't return anything in a structured form. And that is what makes it not a functor. Let's summarize. In the context of JavaScript, a functor is a function that when given a value and a function will unwrap the value into its individual parts, feed those parts into the function that it has been given, and take the return values and return them in a structured form. And that is a functor. I would really like your feedback on this video. Did this give you anything? I picked functors for this episode because I, uh, I haven't done a functional video in a long time and there's been a lot of requests for that. And especially the elusive monad have been among those requests. And functors is one step on the way to understanding monads. The reason that I've been dragging my feet uh, with making functional programming videos is that from this point on, and functors moving on, it gets very mathematical. The definition of functors that I've given you here today is correct in the context of JavaScript, I think. Uh, but in a mathematical context, it's actually much more abstract. And in that sense, I'm not sure that I've given you exactly the right thing because uh, it gets messy. Functors is a uh, concept from a branch of mathematics called category theory, and I'm not entirely sure how to proceed with uh, teaching these things. I mean, should we start learning category theory? On the other hand, a lot of people say that you don't need to understand category theory in order to understand monads. Or maybe monads is something that we should stay away from completely. Maybe I should start doing a series on Haskell. I think I really need your feedback on this one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. As usual, the next episode will be out early Monday morning GMT time. Don't miss out, subscribe, and until next Monday, stay curious.